Well, Grandpa asked me an interesting question, which was, did you open up a repair shop in the basement? And I said, it's kind of looking right now like it's a chainsaw shop. So we're going to do some more chainsaw work right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. And as you may recall, I made that video with my chainsaws I use, and we took a look at that old home light that was Great Grandpa's, that 420. And I thought, after that, wouldn't that be neat to get that going again and, you know, cut up some wood with it or something, just to say that I did. Because up until now, I've had it running maybe 30 seconds and then the recoil kind of messed up and what have you and I thought that will be a simple project we'll fix the recoil and we will you know make it run and here's how we are now we have gone from a simple project to a total tear down and restore so yeah things okay i've spent a ton of money on parts for this freaking saw so we're gonna make it work just for sentimental reasons isn't that nuts but anyway we're gonna continue down the nonsense sentimental path with this right here so i mentioned this at one time this is the last saw that grandpa bought like when i was a kid and it was the first saw that i used and learned to cut you know, trees with and stuff. And what it is, is it's a home light, uh, super XL. And I remember the day that he got it because getting something new was a rare occurrence. You know, we did not get anything new, but he went and got this brand new saw from the big blue store. We had a line of farm stores that were called big blue stores. I don't know if you had those where you were, Later on in life, it got bought out by Orschland, and they moved into all of them. But anyway, I remember going and getting this. I think it was still in the box. I remember, I remember that. Maybe we got the one that wasn't in the box, but at any rate. Super XL Home Light, because that's basically what he had before. I found the books. <laughs> Went through digging through the files to find books and stuff. I couldn't find the book on this one. I think I know where it's at, but... I found the book on the one before, and the one before he had was a big red. I remember that it was a red home light. That was also like a Super XL home light, but it said big red down on it. But anyway, I remember getting this, and I remember this because it was blue, and it said old blue on it, and that was unusual. I thought, you know, a home light, and the bar originally said home light in red on it. So, old blue here. So it was a wood cutting demon, and we cut all kinds of wood from however long to whatever. And it was probably maybe when I was 16 that it messed up. Somebody had posted on the internet. Well, no, I don't know that that would have really been a thing back then yet. But somehow or another, maybe I was driving through town and I saw this tree down in someone's yard and it had a sign on it that said, free if you cut it. So here I thought I was going to do a real good thing for my old granddaddy, and I was going to cut up this tree and get some free wood. So I come and got his saw, and I cut for several hours, and then the saw quit. It acted like it locked up, and that was all she wrote. So I'm also thinking that maybe that same day this recoil messed up a little bit or something, because this is how I found it. I'll get to that in a minute. So... At any rate, I was so beside myself, because here I was trying to do a good thing, and then ended up ruining his saw, which was a lot more expensive than some wood. So, <laughs> I bought another saw, I think, for him because of that. And then this one sat in the shed. And, you know, whatever. I didn't think I was interested in chainsaws, but put it up on the shelf, and there she sat. Now... Fast forward to the other day, when we were talking about this, I got to thinking about this saw while I was working on that other one, and I thought, you know, I kind of like that saw, just because that was Grandpa's saw, and that was the first one I used to cut wood, and I thought, one of these rainy days, I ought to get that out, and we'll see what it takes to, you know, 
rebuild it. I assumed it would be new piston and cylinder, you know, jug and all that. So I hunted and hunted for it. It was this morning, actually. I looked for it. Could not find it. It was not sitting where I remembered it in my brain. And then I had to leave home. And then I was beside myself all day thinking about this freaking saw. I thought, you know, I bet that thing got scrapped because I remember one time putting some stuff on a pallet and taking it to an auction. And I thought, I bet that got thrown on that pallet of stuff and it's gone because I couldn't find it. So all day I was thinking about this and I, it kind of bothered me. I thought, I can't believe that I would junk something like that because I like anything with an engine and there's no way that I would do that. <laughs> so I got to looking on eBay and I thought, you know, I'll find another one and just buy one to use because the one I got is locked up anyway. So, you know, I'll find another one. Well, that's a sad affair too. Apparently, lucky for me, this is a one year made saw and I don't know if it's kind of a collector's item among home-like collectors, but they made it for one year where it said Old Blue. It's a Super XL. It's basically the same saw they made every year there for a while, but only one year, I guess, badge like this. And I want to say it's 97 when that is, but at any rate, could not find it. And the ones on the old Electronic Bay were like 500 bucks. And then you'd have to ship it here for $100. It just seemed like a very sad story. And I was still, I was kicking myself. I thought, I had one of those freaking things. And then, you know, what did I do? So, a while ago, I took a flashlight and I went out again. And I thought, I am going to find that saw. It's got to be here somewhere. And sure enough, it must have fallen off of where it was sitting and then over time other stuff has landed on top of it it was not on the ground but it was on some stuff as you know any flat surface around here accumulates stuff but i saw it down in there i saw i saw this top of this that's at home light and i thought there it is so i dug it out and the only damage from sitting so long was stuff was laying on this and it's kind of warped now so we might have to get a different one of those or figure out what to do there or just ignore it and not worry about it but so there I had a saw pulled on the rope still locked up I thought now you know one of these days I'll make a video we'll tear it apart it'll end up like that one in the 10,000 pieces and then we'll spend way more than it's worth and get it back together so I was cleaning around on it because it was just totally covered with garbage I mean basically what it amounts to is the way they have this set up your gas goes here and your oil goes here so if you weren't very careful like out in the woods you were going to spill some on it well over time sitting there it has attracted all kinds of dirt and fuzz and stuff and whatever and it was just glued on it you couldn't even hardly tell what color it was so <clears throat> i was just sitting down here kind of looking at it reminiscing and I thought, well, I'll clean it up a little bit before doing anything about a video on it. So I took this all loose, cleaned this up a little, you know, got made sure that the bar adjuster thing was moving and got to messing with it and it, it came unstuck. So <laughs> I don't know if it really was stuck bad or if it was trash got wedged in there and locked it up that seems unlikely because i remember when it quit it acted like it bogged down and locked up and so at any rate took the spark plug out squirted some magical stuff down in there to lube it up and sure enough if i can do this with i think it'll run again it's got compression so and i took the spark plug out and looked at it flipped the switch on it sparks so it will fire so it's gonna run <laughs> and it's gonna turn out to be the one that i thought was gonna take the most time and money to get going might be a success very easily whereas the one that i thought was going to be a recoil spring is totally disassembled in pieces so that's about how life works there but what i'm down to now is this rope deal here this ain't gonna go so we're going to take this off and figure out what we got to have here. If we got to have a recoil spring for this one or what, because I can almost bet you that I was not happy with this saw the day that it quit, because if it was doing this too, that is super annoying. And 
<clears throat> I might have done that trying to get it unlocked. I don't remember. But we're going to pull that cover off, which I think is just four bolts. Not evenly spaced, but clean that out. Probably just needs a cleaning based on everything else I've done. Before that, though, maybe I should take the air filter cover off because I can almost bet you that it is probably a very sad situation under there because <laughs> it's been like probably 20 years and I don't know what we'll find I do know what we'll find we'll find dirty stuff because it never got changed grandpa was not a big believer in air filters so yeah it's kind of dirty it's not as bad as I thought it would be but it's still kind of bad. So now the question is, I should probably just shut you off for a little bit whilst I do this because I will eat up a ton of time, you know, cleaning and doing stuff. So I'm going to do that for a minute and then I'll bring you back. All right, that's much more better. I will order once we hear it run a tune-up kit, you know, filter, plug, whatever we got to have there for all that. Uh, that is, I believe, our chain oiler, if I remember right. But I think we're ready to try to remove this cover and figure out why our rope no go. I mean, it kind of goes, but it doesn't... It's just not pulling my rope all the way in, so... Maybe it's going to be as simple as giving the rope one extra wind. You know, that might be the simplest and best way. But we're going to try and see what happens. Now, they did not provide us with overwhelmingly uh, easy to get into situations here. I am impressed, though... Uh, well, I guess, first of all, I should say, maybe saws aren't your cup of tea, and that's not what you came here to watch, but I make a video every day, and they're not short either, and I can't afford to just keep buying new projects to do every single day, so we're going to have to do some of the ones out of the Reeker's vault in order to, you know, keep this operation going, so this is one of those things that I thought about, and... Also, when something gets in my mind, I pretty well got to do it right then because it wears on me until something happens. So that's why we jump around a lot on projects because one day something is in my brain and that's the way it's going to be until I do that thing. But I think what I was about to say a minute ago before I let my brain run away with thought. Uh, I'm impressed with how well the paint has held up on this because a lot of the ones I saw on the internet were not in this good a shape. And I bet you this saw has been used a lot more than those. <laughs> it got used a lot. One thing that I think protected it was it must have got fuel and oil spilled on it enough that it collected enough dust and it protected the paint. So, you'll have that, you know. You'll have that. Okay. Gotta be careful because I'm pretty sure that the on-off switch is... this housing too so we don't want to rip any wires loose because everything was working you know it's going to be really hard not to start this tonight but probably would be a good idea to do that outside you know so that's probably going to be uh, filming the rest of this video tomorrow kind of thing I'm sure it's dirty and miserable. 
Oh, can I pull that off of the coil? Sweet. All right. <laughs> More dirt and sadness. So once again, I believe I will pause the tape. We will clean this up. And I'm wondering if it's going to be as simple as just getting that rope flipped around there one more time. And then she'll go. But it needs to be clean first because that ain't doing it no favors, man. You know, it's never been cleaned, I'm sure. So I'll work on that and then I'll get back with you. All right, that's much more better. You can tell what color it is again. This thing just keeps on giving dirt. But that reminds me whilst I'm here, see that little bucket there that's got the bar for that 420 saw in it? That's a bucket full of evapo rust. It's got the bar in it and the chain that was with it, which I don't know if I can use, but I want to show you how the evapo rust does. Watch this. Ta-da. You can t definitely see the difference. I'm going to have to rig up some way to put it, uh, you know, long ways in there to clean up the whole thing. I'm going to flip it over for now, but then I'll have a stripe bar because the middle will be still rusty. We'll have to figure out a way to lay the whole thing in, but that's a pretty dramatic transformation on something. And that was a good way to illustrate it. I was hoping that was what it would do, so that's why I put it in there like that. But anyway, all right, the matter at hand is recoil. Do you figure we ought to take that plate out and wind the rope around it one more time? I think that would be all it would take to fix it. But I hate to do that too, because who knows what's gonna happen. It might be broken. Ooh. Now there's more cleaning to do. Okay, the spring is in there. I think a guy can wind up the rope the rest of the way. That's what I'm saying. And then I think we'll be golden. Now, of course, if I don't hold it where you can see anything, I'm thinking that I got it figured out here. But now I'm also thinking that there's more to clean. That freaking stuff is everywhere. I mean, let's face it, nobody takes their saw apart and cleans it this deep until there's a problem. And this old saw just run and run and run. And that was why it got this far before there was a problem. trash I don't think there's anything wrong with this I think if a guy was too of course he's not too smart now he's gonna have to that old spring is gonna have to come down okay I guess my idea is not gonna work I was hoping that it would but there's really no way to do what I'm trying to do short of taking the whole recoil out and uh, starting over, which I guess I can do if I'm very careful. More cleaning. Okay, yeah, there's part of our problem. On the other saw, it was that way too. It builds up with trash behind the spring, and then I think you get less spring. So, we're gonna chisel away at this and see if we can't get her to come to life. Yeah, see, they're already not let it go out farther. Let's wind our rope up again, all the way. 
The trick is, you want your spring to wind it in the way you want the rope to wind up. Not the opposite, which is how I did it, apparently. It's got to go. And they're like this. And then we want to go a couple winds. Want that rope under there. One. That one in there. Oh. Now you Knutson. We want that down in the swamp where it belongs. Okay. There. Okay, let's put the screw in before we <laughs> before we lose our progress there. Oh geez. See how many people would do what I'm doing? Not many. Many people would say, why would you want to fool with this old saw? It's worthless. Not to me. There. Okay. You can't have that too tight or it won't do recoil things. I think it's going to work like that. I think that's what I want. So, without further ado, let's put it back on and see if we can rotate the saw with it now. We may still not be done, but because I, for instance, have no idea how this is going to go. I think that it has to go. Oh, yeah. Okay. I might as well try to let you see what I'm doing, but I'm probably not doing you any favors by blinding you with the flashlight. But I had to work to get those little paws on either side of that recoil thing. My extension doesn't have the little ball in it anymore, so it keeps falling out. That's super annoying. But I think I got it. All I had to do is get totally covered in trash in the process. Now that we worked our canoots enough on that, will it do this? Oh yeah. I think she's going to run. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get us Earl, and we're going to have to get us fuel. There's the Earl tank, and that should be the fuel tank. Both dry, which is probably a good thing. But yeah, I think we're we're into it now. However, like I said, it's probably wouldn't you guess a better idea to wait till we were outdoors to do this? It's going to be hard to not have curiosity get the best of me here, but uh, I really feel like if we get it running, we're going to want to take it and immediately try to cut something. We can't do that in here. So, I also feel like a good blow job is probably what this saw needs, don't we all? But we need to blow some of that trash out of places that I can't get to with. I've been using this little brush and different things. And got it pretty good, but there's places that a air hose would do wonders for. And so I think we're going to just pause the filming for here. And tomorrow we'll finish this video up outside, which won't matter to you because it's going to be like... All right, let's see if there's any life left in Old Blue here. We're going to have to fuel and oil it up. Typically home lights 
use. I think the old ones were like 16 to one, and then the newer ones like this would be like 32 to one, whereas a steel is different. But just to try it out, that should be fine. We're not gonna run all day cutting wood with it. But I'll have to get me another little jug and have it mixed up for these home lights if I wanna play with them, I guess. Spoiler alert, I might've bought more of them. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about them, you know. This is going to make a mess. I can tell you that. Now. That's one area where they kind of messed up a little, I think. Is this narrow little fuel filler. But this design of saw remain pretty well unchanged from like the 60s up until they quit doing this so you know the 2000s era even because the a super xl or the xl12 or super xl i think was yeah there's only one i think that was actually a super xl12 but that's basically the same exact saw it's got an automatic oiler also a manual oiler and you know that would have been like a super because it was deluxe but basically that design is the same for years and years and years so you can't f i mean you can understand why <laughs> we're still going with this because that was what they came up with first you know they didn't really change anything this is one of the better saws i guess as far as simplicity reliability and that would explain why grandpa had a good number of them because all the ones he had were this same variation pretty well so oh yep we're gonna make a mess okay sure that's fine that's how this thing got covered with stuff you know because of that right there but I don't know it doesn't really feel like we're pumping but maybe we are everything's cleaned out now so it should that might have been part of our trouble too maybe my oiler quit working and maybe when it locked up it didn't lock up the motor maybe it locked up the clutch because it got too hot I just feel like I'm not accomplishing anything there but that's okay we'll dive into it more as time progresses here we might have to take that screw thing out is where the automatic oil thing is in and it might need cleaned or adjusted or replaced or something Okay, let's see if we can't make this thing live. Never mind the lazy bovine. Nothing. Thinking we might have to give her a shot of magical spray since it's been sitting so long. getting nothing so let me see if I got some of the juice Oh, 
Okie doke. That's good. Now you you had good spark yesterday. There we go. Okay, come on. Come on. I'm betting a carburetor rebuild is in order. Because she no go. And I don't have a lot of patience for stuff such as that. When that happens, luckily, the parts for these are pretty readily available. But the biggest battle is one, you know? It's not stuck, it has compression, it has spark. We just gotta mess with it a little bit to get her brought back around. And I think that's gonna be probably a major tune-up. Carburetor, fuel filter, and the like. New spark plug, probably wouldn't hurt. So I suppose I will gather more parts and we'll make that happen. But that's where we're gonna leave this one. But I think it will be a runner again. And there we have it. So, yeah, it's a lot better shape than it was yesterday. So, that's all we can ask for. As always, if you enjoy my videos, give them a thumbs up. Leave a comment and tell me how dumb you think I am. Or, if by some slim chance you liked it, say that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.